relative knowledge, we have made so many improvements and advances with universities and they are literate people and they are highly educated people, philosophers, scholars, professors. But it's, and the war still goes on. Conflict in their lives still continues. So how can one say that shifting from this to that ends ends the ends the conflict, inner conflict in man. Don't you see? So it's good is also questionable. All right. So then we begin to question relative knowledge. So the Course in Miracle begins with holding you by the hand and each day questioning relative knowledge. And it states also that the thought of God is absolute knowledge, capital K. And the thoughts of God deals with eternal laws. It's not even subject to time. All right. Now we can probably agree with this and you can call this good. But does that mean that you have brought absolute knowledge into application? Obviously not. All right. So it wants the Course in Miracle insists that we have to take the next step, which is beyond learning. It's not, you do not attain it through learning. How is that possible? How is it possible is, it says a Course in Miracles. Then we have to understand what a miracle is. A miracle is a, a, a pause in which you begin to question, like its first questions begin, first lessons begin to undo and question, this does not mean anything. My meaningless thoughts do not mean anything. That all I know is the past. All right. So then, as we go into it, the miracles introduce me to a pause, to a gap, that's no longer touched by thought. And this gap will question every conclu conclusion I make. You see, everything that binds me, it would question the bondage of my knowing. Are you there? Now, that's going to revolutionize one's life when you begin to question. Could you go into more what that gap is? Mr. The gap is that part which has a newness in it. It's a moment of newness. The whole, uh, the Course in Miracle terms it the holy instant. That what is not conditioned and is not of time and is involuntary. So can I invite, and I do, when I question my knowings, when I question it, the minute I'm beginning to question it, then I'm no longer under its authority. Isn't it? That I dare question my conditioning. I dare question my own. So then I begin to out, outgrow, to undo my own belief system. Isn't that remarkable? So, the, so far the mankind has done how to learn from another, isn't it? Either from a book or from a teacher. And then, according to this, then that learning is merely multiplying, you see, certain kind of information, which you would in the end have to undo again. Except, except if it's an information at the level of your, say, you want to know where's the door or what street this is. But these, are, these are, don't have any psychological, you, nobody ever goes to, the, to war because they asked you, where is my street? Yes. Mm -hmm. it, has no, it doesn't offend anyone because no one has any vested interest in that information. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see? But when you question their nationalism, it's a different story. Mr. Singh, may I ask a question? Yes. Sir, when you speak of questioning, 
it seems a relatively apparent to me that I can question with thought, but the type of questioning you're speaking of seems that it should be somewhat different from that. I would say that's a very, very good point, Frank. If I question something, then the question would remain, remain eternally open because you would also question another thought that comes in the form of an answer. If you're really serious and you're interested, deeply interested in something, are you there? Then every answer that's given, either by you or by another, you would question. And you would see that in a very short time, once or twice you question this and question that, you would be at a more basic level. Isn't it? But if I want to condition you or you want to condition me, I accept your answer, your conclusion. Are you there? And people who have motives you see, they become very persuasive, don't you see? But if you want to question motive itself, in yourself and in the other person, you'll have to have quite a lot of questions, isn't it? And as the more you question, the more profound it becomes. Less words. You'll have to become more precise, much more exact. You'll develop discrimination. You will demand honesty. Is honesty ever touched by thought? That is that's, the, that's the miracle. The Course in Miracles speak about that what is not touched by thought and energizes you for having come upon that that's not of thought. 